So hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about motivation and how we can become more motivated to achieve our goals and our directions we want to take up in our lives. So what exactly is motivation? Motivation by definition is the reason or reasons that we act in a particular way or which drives us to take particular action in order for us to achieve a particular goal. Motivation is basically the driving force which is either internal or external that helps us to achieve a goal or a particular set of goals that we want to achieve both in the short term or in the long term. For example, I want to study for an exam in order for me to pass the exam and eventually become a medical doctor. Or else, I want to go to the gym so that by summer I can take Instagram photos and become a fitness influencer. Or else, for example, I want to learn coding so that eventually I can work remotely and live in a tropical island somewhere in Southeast Asia. These are all great motivational factors. However, most of us fail to remain motivated although we have or want to achieve that goal so damn strongly we really want for example to go on holiday to new york or want to for example learn a new language and speak japanese fluently however when we see all those kanjis or all those grammar points we get demotivated and we start procrastinating and block our motivational drive away we literally shove the motivation down the toilet and basically just feed our procrastination and continue doing something else. We either, for example, switch to gaming, watch a movie, or else just become a couch potato and let the hours pass and just scroll on our mobile phones indefinitely until we sleep. So the lack of motivation basically drives us to not achieve the things we want to achieve in our life. Motivation can be classified into two main forms. We have an internal motivational drive and also an external motivational drive. The internal motivational drive is basically that related to our own physiology, our bodies and our brains. How the brain works is quite complicated and motivation inside our brain is dependent upon a multifactorial causation. Multiple factors cause us to become motivated or demotivated because of our brain's physiological functioning. If we look at the brain, the brain as an organ is quite a complex structure. Most of us till this day in the scientific world don't know yet how the brain actually works and when it comes to the medical studying of the brain we know mostly what happens to motivation from the pathological states of the brain. So if we look at for example pathologies like depression, schizophrenia, anxiety and ADHD we can see that people who suffer from for example ADHD have a very low motivational drive because they have various thoughts popping into their brain and they can't focus on one single particular thing and eventually they become demotivated through their procrastination to start something and to continue and eventually finish off that particular task. The human brain consists of various areas. These include the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala and the basal ganglia and the striatum, also the hypothalamus. These areas affect our motivational drive in various ways. The hypothalamus, which is part of the deep areas of the brain, or as is known as the old brain, basically controls our basic human needs. It controls our want to eat, our want to drink fluids, our want to seek out shelter, protection, reproduction and also pleasure. So the hypothalamus basically deals with maintaining our body in a hemostasis type of standard and it keeps us basically in a safe and physiologically stable place. After the hypothalamus, we also have the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia, which are mostly related to pleasure and to reward systems in the brain, and they're also related, for example, to anxiety and emotionality. Therefore, the basal ganglia, for example, the amygdala, deals with mostly emotional response towards a particular behavior. Therefore, we do a particular behavior like we play the lottery, we win the lottery and after winning the lottery, we feel really good. Or else you sit for an exam, you're anxious, you pass the exam and by passing the exam, 
you get reinforcement and that makes you feel really emotionally satisfied. And the same thing applies to work. When we go to work and we initially don't want to wake up in the morning and go to work, we force ourselves usually to walk into the job, do our job, but as the time progresses and as we perform task after task, we eventually get a motivation from the actions and the tasks we are actually performing by the positive reinforcement we are obtaining in our minds. This positive reinforcement eventually makes us more motivated in order for us to keep on going to work and achieving a salary. Another area of the brain which is involved in motivation is the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex, on the other hand, forms part of the newer brain, which is also known as the neocortex. The prefrontal cortex, if we look at various pathological states, for example schizophrenia, depression, anxiety disorders, we can see that dysfunction in this region of the brain makes us poor at decision making or goal planning. It makes us less motivated to take up goal oriented behavior. It makes us less motivated to seek out a decision making behavior. It also makes us less motivated to go ahead and complete the task that we actually want to complete. Therefore, understanding the pathology of the brain gives us a better understanding of how the brain works when it comes to motivation, desire and reward for a particular behavior. Now, this function in the brain is not only pathological, but it can also be related to addictive cycles. So when there's an addiction going on in our brain, like we're addicted to gambling, to gaming, or to particular substances, like substance abuse, the reward pathway usually in the brain, which is related to dopamine, is actually dysfunctional. This false motivational drive eventually makes us motivated towards the wrong things in our life, like gaming, like wasting hours, scrolling on social media, and these hours wasted can never be replaced and therefore you're actually wasting days, months, years, basically doing absolutely nothing good for yourself and eventually that in itself becomes demotivating and is a factor for procrastination. It's not the first time that I, for example, when I was a teenager, used to game for like 12 hours straight till 2 in the morning and after that I wouldn't have any other motivation or energy to pursue my studying or finishing of the homework that I had to do for the next day. So the over consumption of a particular task, because we have a strong reward system towards that particular task, can make us demotivated by strengthening the procrastination towards another task which is actually beneficial for us. The same reason is why we procrastinate. Most of the times we procrastinate because we block off our motivational drive. There is usually a thought of anxiety in our head or a perceived future negative thought about us failing the exam or as we're not going to achieve our fluency in the language we want to learn or as we're not going to, for example, obtain our slim body and therefore we just don't go altogether to the gym, we don't study and we don't even, for example, apply for the job we want to do. And we stay basically stuck in the same place and in the same position that we are in. And this basically eventually also leads to demotivation. Another thing we need to understand when it comes to motivation is that of personality. Personality and the personality traits play a huge and major role in how we perceive reality, how we interact with reality and how we actually become motivated. When it comes to personalities, personality is basically subdivided into five different personality traits and each personality trait has an effect mostly on our motivational drive. For example, people who are extroverts are more likely to pursue social oriented type of behavior. They tend to be more extroverted in seeking and achieving their goals compared to less, for example, social extroverted individuals. Introverted individuals might have a greater superpower when it comes to, for example, reading books, spending time alone, having a more logical way of thinking, going through things in a more thorough manner and more likely to achieve personal achievements and personal goals in a more timely manner compared to an extrovert. Also, for example, another personality which is related to procrastination is that of neuroticism. Neuroticism is a personality which is associated to a state of hyperarousal. Neurotic personalities usually tend to arouse themselves very rapidly. They tend to be very reactive. It can be associated with depression, mood disorders, 
and for example anger and anger management issues. People tend to become aroused rapidly, however, release their steam also very rapidly and basically procrastinate and avoid the task altogether, eventually not doing anything um, to achieve their particular goal. Therefore, personality, which is quite a complex topic to understand, has a big role when it comes to the overall motivational drive. Therefore, understanding the medical pathology of the brain and also understanding the persona is essentially important in order to understand how we actually can become more motivated. At the end of the day, what motivation actually is in the simplest of terms is basically keeping a thought in your head long enough for you in order to achieve that particular thought. For example, if I want to go to the gym and I want to, for example, gain mass because I have an idol and I looked at, for example, YouTube and I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Pumping Iron, I keep that thought in my brain and I say, you know what, three times a week I'm going to go to the gym I'm going to lift heavier, I'm going to progress better and better, and I keep that thought at the back of my brain, and whilst I'm taking action in pursuing my goal, I become eventually more motivated and more motivated at continuing down the road of achieving that particular goal. The same applies to medicine and, for example, becoming a doctor. When studying for exams and when, for example, studying to become a doctor, becoming a doctor takes years. The course is usually five years or six years and it takes year after year after year of exams and after that eventually you graduate and become a medical doctor. However, the road is long, there is a lot of work to be done, a lot of studying, a lot of sleepless nights. Sometimes I did not sleep two days in a row for me to, for example, sit my anatomy exams or my physiology exams. I still remember going down to the anatomy lab, you know, and uh, looking at bodies on the weekend. So you have to sacrifice quite a lot and you have to maintain a, a high level of discipline in order to achieve that particular goal. So the persistence of the thought or of the goal in our mind is essentially the most important factor for us to be motivated and also to stay motivated. Now, in order for us to do this, we need a sense of discipline. For example, now that I'm studying Japanese, the biggest problem with me studying the language is that of the kanji. The kanji is one of the hardest aspects of the Japanese language and also the grammar. And for me to stay motivated to study Japanese, I basically think of what Tokyo or Kyoto or Osaka can be like. I keep myself focused on the future goals of me going back to Kyoto or to Tokyo and basically this helps me to basically study every single day around one or two hours a day and eventually become more fluent in the language and hopefully in the future pass my JLPT exam which I will be hopefully taking in July. Another factor which one has to keep in mind in order to maintain motivation is that of taking action. Most of us wait for an internal feeling or motivational drive in order to take action. When in reality, in order for us to become motivated and to achieve our goals, the first thing we have to do to become motivated is that of taking action in the first place. When we take action in the first place, for example, you want to go to a party or you want to go abroad and you want to go study a new language or you want to learn code, the greatest way to be motivated is to open up your laptop, literally get a tutorial, build something and start literally typing away. The action in itself drives motivation because from one line of code, you will eventually write 25 lines of code. And after you built your mini program, that motivational drive helps you achieve a better goal-oriented behavior, which eventually reinforces over time and eventually you will be able to achieve your task. So action and the pursuit of action is essentially the most important factor when achieving motivation rather than motivation itself. And also for us to remain motivated, it's important for us to avoid burnout. Most of us, especially in the medical field, work extremely long hours, we sacrifice weekends, we sacrifice family reunions, friends, relationships in order for us to achieve our future careers. However, one must avoid burnout because burnout is the main killer of motivational drive. In order for us to do this, we need to practice self-care, like mental health practices. We need to be more mindful about how we interact with the world around us. We need to sleep better. We need to eat better. 
and also we need to exercise more. Most of us usually are sitting down long hours, we're not really moving much, and this lack of movement, the bad diet, the lack of sleep, the over-caffeination of, of our brains is leading us basically to more anxiety, higher cortisol, and this eventually makes us even more demotivated and less able to continue uh, studying or pursuing that particular goal that we want to achieve. So my final take home message guys is importantly always look at your basic needs first, prioritize your basic needs, take care of your health, sleep better, eat better, remain hydrated, take caffeine if needed but don't take too much and find some time to go outside, exercise and socialize. Everything you've done in a balanced way can keep you motivated and also help you achieve your goals. I hope this video was interesting guys. I hope I gave you some important tips. I'm trying to make more uh, videos eventually for my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching as always and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one.